<laughs> Yesterday, we saw quadratics in what are called standard form. Today, we're going to look at two other forms uh, of writing our of writing, writing a quadratic. And the first is going to be in what's called vertex form. Vertex form because when it's, if we rewrite our equation in this form, you can read off where the vertex is. It'll actually be told to you in the, the way it's written. Vertex form looks like this. Something times when it looks a lot like the general form of, say, like an absolute value. The only thing there's a squared here instead of absolute value symbols. Where the vertex is at h comma. If your function is in vertex form, if our parabola is here, this is going to tell you exactly how far to shift this up and down and how far to shift this left and right, just like we saw with the absolute values earlier in the trimester, where it's going to tell us all the shifts and shrinks and stretches that are going on to this parabola that we didn't quite see laid out for us in standard form, which is what we saw yesterday. K will, be, will tell us how to shift it up and down the same as what's written, because it's plus K. And H will tell us left, right, and opposite, because it's subtract H. It's identical to our absolute value, general absolute value functions from earlier in the trimester, from chapter 1. Also, A is, let me stretch. And it'll tell you how much it's being stretched or shrunk. Okay. So we can graph these. We can graph these parabolas using the parent function very efficiently if we're in vertex form. So if you know what the parent function looks like, then we can apply all these nice little stretches and shrinks and slides and ups and downs and reflections and stuff. We can apply all those rules to just our original shape of our graph and transform it into our new parabola because it's in what's called the vertex form. So like, for example, what are the, all the transformations going on to our first example here? y equals net 1 half of x minus 3 squared minus 5. Alex? It's shrunk by 2 or a half, whatever you want to call it. It's moved to the right. Shrunk by half, it's gone opposite of three, so to the uh, three to the right, and same as negative five, so down five. So we'll take our original graph. Recall that the original function starts at zero zero, goes up to over one up one, over two up four, over three up nine, and mirror. This three squared is nine. This is the original function. So if we want to apply these changes to, our, to get our new function, then you could say, well, let's first find the vertex. Right 3, down 5. Right 3, down 5 is our new vertex. And we're going to shrink it by a factor of 1 half. So if we went over 1, if before we went over 1, up 1, this time we're going to go over 1 and up half. If we went over 2, we went up 4, so now we'll go over 2 and up half of that. Why would you or 2. go like over 2 and up 2? Or over 1 and up 2? Anyway, uh, how should this, our next function be transformed? Going left, two, down three. So we'll go left two, down three. So the vertex is at negative two, negative three. Is it stretched or shrunk by anything? No, it's the same general shape now. So now, since recalling back to the parent function, the parent function goes over one, up one. 
Over 2, up 4. Over 3, up 9. If you want to keep going. And then it's mirrored. So, over here. Here. And so on. If you want to draw the axis symmetry, you could. Because it's through the vertex. And every point that we draw, so you really need, only need to find half of these points. And then when you graph them, you can just mirror them over to the other side of the axis symmetry. If you want. Can you, like... Thorne, we want to find the axis of symmetry. Where does the axis of symmetry run through? What special point does it go through? The vertex. The vertex. In particular, it's the same as the x value of the vertex. So if you're in vertex form, the axis symmetry is simply just x equals whatever the h value is. Because the vertex is there. So if I ask you to tell me what the axis symmetry is and it's in vertex form, it's just the equation x equals whatever the h value is. Whatever is equals to the opposite of what's inside of the parentheses. So like the axis of symmetry of our first example problem would be the equation x equals... Three. X equals three. X equals negative two. X equals h, since it's x minus h. We'll tell you the axis of symmetry. <coughs> In intercept form. The x intercepts are given. In particular, specifically, <laughs> it looks like this. Uh, I think the book uses this notation x minus p and x minus, I think, q, I want to say. Where p and Q, whoops, Q and Q are the X intercepts. There'll be some, there could be some constant outside. Right. We'll factor this, we'll factor out any constant such that it's 1X and 1X. So if these were, if it was like 2X plus 3 and 4X minus 1, then you'd factor out the 4 and factor out the 2 and you, what's left inside will tell you the intercepts. Well, so let's combine some knowledge here. Let's use this combined with the knowledge that our parabolas are symmetric and come up with some ideas of how to find, like, say, the axis symmetry or the vertex from this. Well, let's see. In our first example here, what should the intercepts be of our first example? What are, what's being added or subtracted in each of those things? What, what should they be, Nate? Zero and minus. Zero and, I'm going to say it was minus. Oh, so four. Zero and four should be the intercepts. Zero and four are the x-intercepts. So that means our parabola crosses the x-axis at zero and at one, two, three, four. As a formula, the axis of symmetry is the formula x is equal to the average of the intercepts. So if you add them together and divide by 2, you get the halfway point. You get the average. So if you add 4 and 0, divide by 2, you get 2. Or in our case, the axis of symmetry should be this x equals equation. X is 2. Because our parabolas are nice and symmetrical. So if the axis of symmetry is 2, what's the x-coordinate of the vertex? 2. 2. So how are you going to find the y-coordinate of the vertex? 2 into there. So the y-coordinate of our vertex 
should be at, let's see, y is equal to negative 2 times 2 minus 4. So the y coordinate's at 4. On here, the y coordinate's at 4. And holy cow, now it looks like we have a parabola being formed. Now, it has the same general shape as every other parabola. And it's even an open down parabola because it was multiplied by a negative number out front. So it should be a upside down parabola. Hey, how about that? How many is that? Three feet. Uh, you can work on this one on your own if you'd like. I'm going to look at, uh, for you physics freaks, we've got a nice physics problem right here. Wahoo. I'll even give you the equation. But you didn't have to know some kinematics. I'll give you the equation. And we'll even talk in feet per second instead of centimeter. If I tell you the velocities here, where time is in t seconds, how many seconds after will it hit the ground? Well, if this is the initial velocity, and h is the object's height, if h is the height, what at what height would it be zero? What, at what height would it be on the ground? Zero. So where are the zeros or the x-intercepts of this equation? What are the zeros? What times make this equation zero? Zero. And what makes this five? So the zeros of this or the height is at zero when t is when t is at zero. So when you start, it's at zero. Starts on the ground. And then five seconds later, five seconds later, it's hit the ground again. What's the maximum height? When's that at its highest? This, this looks like a parabola, right? Two variables multiplied together. So how would you find the maximum of a parabola? Where's the maximum at? The, the y coordinate of the vertex. So you better find the vertex, the x value of the vertex, and then calculate its y value. Standard form, why don't you multiply these out and simplify so you're in standard form. So you get something times x squared plus something times x plus some constant. You could FOIL or box multiply. Simplify. Simplify. So in this case, you might want to FOIL and multiply by 3. Or how about FOIL this perfect square out, multiply it by negative 1 half, and then add 35. 